Hey, Herbie, it's a real honor to be here. Uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, what was it like the first time you worked with Miles Davis? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was... <laughs> Uh, and, and it was funny because uh, 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 even before I actually officially worked with him, um, when he called Donald Byrd's house to speak to me, by the way, I'd heard that Miles was looking for me. You know, that, these rumors were, <laughs> were floating around, and I didn't believe a word of it. You know, but final, finally, Donald Byrd said to me, Look, when Miles calls, tell him you're not working with anybody. I said, Well, look, Donald. First of all, Miles is not going to call. Secondly, how could I do that to you? I've been working with you. You discovered me. You, you know, turned me on to having a publishing company. You got me my contract with Blue Note Records. You got me the, this car, the Cobra. He said, shut up, man. He, <laughs> said, he said, if I ever stood in the way of a great opportunity of you working with Miles, he said, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. You know, which was fantastic that he said that. The next day, phone calls, and it's Miles. First question was, you working with anybody? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> so the next day, because uh, uh, Miles said, come to my house the next day, you know. And, uh, anyway, I got to his house, and Tony Williams was there, a the great drummer. Ron Carter, a great bass player, was there. George Coleman, you know, great saxophonist, he was there. Um, and Miles played just a little bit, and then he threw his trumpet on the couch, and and then he ran upstairs and kind of left the, the, the duties to Ron Carter to, to, you know, have us go through a few tunes and play some things. I, I thought I was auditioning. And anyway, a uh, on the third day, um, because Miles kept asking us to, you know, come over to the next day, uh, but Miles did come down and played a little bit more, and then he said, "Okay, next week we're gonna uh, meet at one thirty at uh, Columbia Recording Studios," and and I said, "Miles, does that mean I'm in the band?" Miles looked at me and had this kind of gleam in his eye, but he, he, he said some expletive, and <laughs> he, he said, you're making the record, <laughs> you know. But what I found out years later was when Miles threw his horn down and ran upstairs, and this was like 20 or 25 years later, I found out that Miles went upstairs to his bedroom, and he was listening to us over the intercom. Because, like I said, I was scared. He knew that we were gonna be nervous with him around. So he wanted to hear us, you know, unencumbered by, by that kind of fear. Which was fantastic and, and, and very compassionate of him to do that, you know. But that's the kind of person that Miles was.